welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. <laughs> right, so you're here because you want to find out whether installing a whole house booster pump is going to do anything to improve the pressure in your home on a hot and cold water side. We're going to install the brand new Salamander Wright pump on this gravity-fed hot and cold water system behind us. You'll learn about gravity-fed systems, some installation tips along the way, including the really important installation of a flange. I'll also show you how quiet this pump is and how it can boost your whole house up to eight outlets with its insane centrifugal technology. Finally, I'll show you the before and after on our system here. So step one, you need to understand the system that we're working on and we've got it all here for you physically. Up top, that big black plastic tank up there, which the eagle-eyed among you will notice is a bit naughty because the feeds out of the tank are below the ball valve coming into the cold water system. To prevent air being sucked into your system, it's best to pipe these up at the opposite end of the tank. That's underneath my gorgeous little sign. See that? That is full of water. That water is fed from the mains, cold water mains in, yeah? There'll be a little valve on that, which is actually that tiny little silver valve you can see just going in up there. And that'll be fed by a ball valve that will turn on and off according to the level of water in here, okay? This pipe you can see coming down here is this pipe. We're just gonna draw it out the bottom like that. We don't need to physically draw it in exactly the way that it is. So we've got our hot water tank just here like so. And we're gonna put our hot water tank at the bottom just like that. This pipe is gonna feed cold water all the way down to the bottom of our hot water tank, all right? And if you look carefully as well, we've also got a little drain cock. I think I've drawn that right, I can't remember. But the drain cock's just down here, look at that. Someone cared. They even pointed it in the right direction. The only reason I've installed it like that is because I'm gonna be the one who has to drain this all down when this is done. Coming out of the hot water tank, we've got this pipe here. That comes out of the top like so. And before we continue showing you where that goes, why don't we actually install it? And then I'll show you on this drawing what we've actually done. Let's get on with it. Hey. Buy my sweet red roses to for a penny. It's always a good idea to make sure that all of your pipe work is really well clipped to a wall when you're doing this sort of work and to use whatever fittings and joints you feel happy with. Today I'm using solvent weld fittings. In a few minutes time we'll be unboxing and installing the Salamander Wright pump. When we've got it running in a few minutes time try to see how loud you think it is. I'll give you a clue it's flipping quiet and I'll also be explaining to you why it's so important for us to install a Salamander flange on one of these systems. So don't go anywhere guys there's so much for you to learn in this video from doing pipe work and watching me do it to understanding how these systems work and also the unique features of this insane salamander pump. Done and dusted and look at that a burn mat's actually survived for once. So there you go guys that's how you do a nice little bit of soldering without it running down the back. We left that little diagram here and now we've got our pipe installed here. It goes into a T like that and then we go down and we're feeding a kitchen tap at the bottom. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna run this up here. We're gonna feed our bath tap. And then also out of the top of that, this is gonna run up to here. We call this a vent and expansion pipe. I'm about to install the hot and the cold feed to the bath tap. Now we've just had a little look at that diagram over there, haven't we? There's going to be a problem with this install, okay? Have a little look and if you want, pause the video now and think to yourself, what is the problem gonna be? And if you know what it is, comment it below, all right? And then we'll address it later on in the video. Hey. Whilst I'm getting all this installed, I just want to talk to you about the sort of systems that the particular type of pump we're working on today can be used on. We're using a universal negative head pump. This is my preferred type of pump to install. They use a massive amount of centrifugal force to increase the pressure to the whole house. As I said earlier, they're suitable for multiple outlets, including showers, bath, basins, toilet systems, and even dishwashers. Remember, they can only be used on vented systems. The great thing about a negative head pump is it's going to solve the problem that I hope you guys now know is present in this install. And I'll give you a hint, it's something to do with that bath tap. So now we've got our vented and unpumped system installed. Before we have a look at the pump and install it to improve this system, let's have a look at its current performance before we install this pump. 
and this should demonstrate the lack of flow and pressure that you've probably got in your own home and the reason you're currently sat here on YouTube watching a video on how to solve this problem. And I'll be showing you how to do that in a second. There's no, no leaks. Anyway, let's get on with the job. So everything's back on now. This is the cold pressure down the bottom. Not great, this is the hot pressure. And this is the mixed out. Got a little bit of water coming out up there as well at the bathroom tap that is currently on. All right, so that's a demonstration of the problem that we've got in this system. Let me grab my steps and I'll show you exactly what the problem is. I want you to understand, right, that the top of our water level that we've got on our drawer in there is the top of that tank level there, which is currently about this high, okay? So our water level is sitting about here along this, which means that when we open this tap up, we are very lucky to get any water out whatsoever. We're not really gonna get anything out. And even more than that is say this tap is over a bath, the shower head's gonna be even higher up. You're not gonna get any water out of that at all. Now often what you'll find on first floors of houses, if this is low enough and the tank sat above it all, you just get worse, not very great flow. It's just not very good, the shower's not great. You're not gonna wash nothing away, and I mean nothing. So what we need to do is we need to install a negative head whole house booster pump so we can boost all these outlets. Let's have a look at that pump now. This is a twin impeller. So that's telling us that we've got our inlets here, so say hot and cold. Although it doesn't actually match, matter which way around they go. And then our outlets are at the top here. So we're introducing water to the center of an impeller that you can see really, really nicely here. So that water is introduced to the center of these three impellers here, which I've got to say, I had no idea there was three in the end of one of these, it's absolutely mental. They're spinning around and that action of spinning around, imagine you've got a hose pipe with water in it and you're spinning it around like that. That water is gonna fly out. And that energy is harnessed with the body around here to go out of this pipe here under pressure. So that is what a shower pump does. You can also get whole house booster pumps that are just the single side. So this one here, you'd use, generally you'd use this just to do the cold or the hot water. So we've got one inlet on the side and one outlet. Now the difference you're gonna see between this one here and this one here is that we've got this big bulb on the end. What the bulb does is this is a negative head pump. So it allows us to charge up a little bit of built up water pressure. So if there's outlets that are above the water line in our tank up there, we have that bit of pressure to shoot through when we open up that bath tap to initiate the pump and start pumping up to that bath tap. I personally will fit negative head pumps even on systems that don't 100% need it because you don't know what people are gonna add on after you've been there. So this is the one that we're gonna be fitting today. So first thing I just want you to notice, we've got valves on them already, and then we've got flats as well. Because these are angled, these will be the inlet, so that's how I'm gonna pipe this up. Two more here for the straights, okay? Right, so look at this beast. So the first thing I think you need to look at is the fact that the negative head bit is just here, okay? There's a little O-ring in there, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pick out a little expansion vessel or a little pressure vessel and we're just going to screw that on here like so and that's in. You've got some little uh, rubber bits here for the feet. Oh, these, as anyone knows how to get these off well, please let me know. <laughs> I always struggle to get these off. Pop that on its tootsies and that will stop any vibration going through floorboards or anything like that when this is actually running. But these aren't very loud anyway so and in a few minutes time once I've got this piped in I will give you a little bit of a, an idea as to how loud it is. Also, we've got a plug socket on here. Couple of little tips on this as well. We've got gauzed filters on these. The gauzes need to go on the inlets of the pump so it protects the pump. So, we're gonna be pressurizing this system now. You watch me install it, and then you will see the before and after of doing a job like this. Let's get on with it, love. As you can see, I've made my pipe work just here a little bit low for all that, but that doesn't matter. Gauzes go on the inlets, remember what I said? So what we need to do, we've got our hot down, right, that we need to pump. So we've got to find a way of getting that pipe into this pipe, and then the outlet of this pipe carrying on in that pipe there, right? The cold's gonna come down 
we need to get the cold to go into this pipe and then we need to we need for it to carry on out onto that pipe there all right but before we do anything this is a salamander flange and it goes on top of our tank just like so all right and they do have a couple of little bits of plates on here as well so you can have different sizes and all that sort of thing uh, i'm hoping that it fits in the top of this i really really do uh, <laughs> but let me show you why with the aid of a diagram and a pencil this will go into the tank and be fully submerged in water you've got these little holes here that allow us to suck hot water into this here and then that will come out just out of this outlet but then if there's any air in this tank or little tiny bubbles that we don't want to go into the pump because we're protecting the pump, that will go up here and then out through our vent pipe because we're going to make a few changes to this installed in a minute. The reason we do that is sometimes these pumps can pump so much if this was installed wrong, we could actually drag air down from that expansion pipe that goes into the top of the tank and that could drag down into the pump and cause loads of trouble. So we've got our tank here, yeah? Our salamander flange will go down like so, and that draws water from here, yeah, and pumps it off to our pump. But all the air bubbles that we don't want to introduce, and also the fact that we don't want to suck air from our expansion pipe, will go on the outer part. So let's just draw that there. We'll go on the outer part of our salamander flange like that, and that air and water will be vented off nicely there. It's a very important thing that you've got to do and we're going to install it now on here. So that's the first bit of this job is to get this installed on here and then also turn this bit into just an elbow and this piece of pipe will be redundant when we do the install. Oh, don't we all love doing a lovely little bit of pipe work, especially when it's sped up like this. If only all pipe work could be like that. Hopefully this video is helping you out, not only learning how to install one of these products, but also what it can do to help the water pressure in your home. If we have helped you out in any way on this video or on any other videos, please consider clicking the thanks button. Nobody ever does. Even the missus has watched loads of these videos and she's never clicked the thanks button. In fact, she's never even done the verbal thanks button. Anyway, one thing some of you may notice here is that we've got quite a few elbows going in on this job right now. Usually I try to go for sweeping bends if possible on the installation but I want to show to you that when this job is finished with elbows the increase in pressure is absolutely brilliant so don't go anywhere we'll be showing you that in just a few seconds time so then we've corrected the pipe work look we've got these lovely bends here loads of little bits of stuff going on and also we brassoed it as well so it's all lovely and very nice now the next thing you should do once you've got all that installed is turn the water on, um, make sure you've obviously got no leaks and then open every outlet in the house that the pump is supposed to be feeding. You aren't going to be turning the pump on yet. So you turn the outlet on, let me just get a bouquet. Do you ever watch uh, Keeping Up Appearances? Oh no, there you go. We've got that in the middle like that. We're letting out this water, okay? Now, I just want you to remember as well, if we open it up up there, no, nothing's really going to come out. So if we go up here, because like I demonstrated to you earlier on, this tap here, like ser seriously, nothing. Nothing's really coming out of there, just a, a drippage. We've now purged as much of the air out as we can, but the main thing is, is we've purged water out of the pump impellers itself. So what I'm gonna do now, is we're gonna turn the pump on, but before we do that, I'm just gonna lay some towels out because there's gonna be quite a bit of water going everywhere. By the way, that isn't what you think it is. It's actually tile adhesive. Put this round here. I'm just gonna plug the old pump in. Right, so the pump has just turned on and it's pumped up for a while and it's got up to pressure. So what that's done, the pump has pressurized all this pipe work up here and it's made pressure. So the pressure switch is cut off, but it's also just slightly Build that up with a little bit of uh, pressure in there. So when we open up a outlet that's high up or hasn't got enough head pressure to initiate a pump switch, that little bit of pressure will initiate the pump switch for us. 
So, a minute ago, you saw that there was absolutely no water coming out of this. Well, let's see what we get now. Hell yeah! So now it's pumping it up, pumping it up, pumping it up. That slight delay there was the fact that we just had a little bit of um, air at the top of these pipes here because we, we weren't able to purge that out. But now it should come on pretty much straight away. There'll be a little dribble and then it will start to shoot and fire. Just like that. And then, there you go. Why not leave it on while well, that one's going? I'll show you this one. So now we can run two. Isn't that incredible? That is a massive, massive change. And then we'll turn this one off. And it pumps up, makes pressure, and then cuts out, just like that. That's how these pumps work. That's why, when I, I love it when I go to a house and someone says, um, our water pressure isn't very good, we've got this type of system, or they send you a few photos of the system they've got, and you think, right, I'm gonna put a whole house booster pump in there and completely sort out all the problems they've got so they can shower forever. So you saw what it looked like earlier on. You saw how bad the water flow was earlier on. You've seen how these systems work. Hopefully you've come away with this video uh, with a vast amount of knowledge, a lot more than you had before you started watching it. Uh, and you thought, wow, I've loved every second of it. So you might wanna hit that thanks button and donate a little bit of money because I'm poor. But if you wanna find out any more about these pumps here, I've left a link to that below and in the top pinned comment as well. Make sure that you copy and paste that into a new page. Don't just click it. I want to keep you on YouTube, keep that retention up. But yeah, absolutely brilliant piece of kit. Really, really nice, nice and quiet as well. Um, go and find out about them, they're brilliant, all right? If you want to know more about what I've done here today, and especially if you like the soldering that I've done, you want to click on this video here to learn how to solder, just like I have done in this video today, in depth. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon. Hold tight!